so low in that leg strength. I need practically on the floor. What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And some of the most common advice you'll ever get is to get low and bend your knees. And while this might seem like a universal truth, a lot of players, they start, when they start getting low, they actually look even more awkward and it throws their whole swing out of sync. All right. Back in the day when I was competing, I was always under the impression that more bend was better. But if you actually watch closely, say at Roger Federer, he doesn't bend his knees a whole lot like this. But compare that then, contrast that to a lot of the WTA players who do get very, very low. So the question is, what's, what works here? What's the right thing to do? Now, I used to really work my legs, work them hard, get almost excessively low. But more so than just getting more tired, the frustrating part was that extra bend didn't produce extra results. So really today we're going to debunk the mystery of using your legs properly. And while I still want you to get your legs in great shape, I want you to get the most out of them. So before we continue, thank you guys for hitting that subscribe button. Let's rock into the video. Guys, to preface this video, similar how we broke, break the upper body technique down to segments of shoulder, elbow, wrist, we're going to talk about what's called triple extension for the lower body. Okay, And that is your ankles, knees, and hips. Now, ankles, knees, and hips, those are the joints controlled by the respective muscles. So the calf muscle right here moves the ankle. The quads move your knees, and the glutes move the hips. So let's start with the biggest of the three muscles being the glutes. And if you've ever done deadlifts like this at the gym, or if you've ever picked up a lot of items off the ground without bending your back or your knees too much, you're going to feel basically your butt, your butt muscle work, these glutes right back here. Okay, and so when you're hitting, see this little crease at the hips right here? This little crease and then straightening out, you should be able to get this little pop, 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 pop right here. It's, right, it's very subtle and similar to like many of the, the big muscles, okay, in this swing, this can be very, this is, it's a very small movement, but it's very critical. Now you see a lot of players actually getting low incorrectly, all right? So let's say if a lot of players actually do this and get low. Now what's wrong with this? Do you see how my shoulders are flat and parallel to the ground, okay? In order, for, that's incorrect. In order for me to use my glutes, I need to get tilted forward right here and straighten out. So you can all think of this as a good phrase is to dip and rip to dip and rip. Similar to like you're throwing a medicine ball, you wouldn't go straight down like this, right? You get that little tuck right here at the hip, this tuck, boom, and explode from there. All right guys, now to demo this, I'm gonna hit this first backhand with no knee bend. So only, only glutes, no knee bend. And I should actually be able to hit it pretty hard straight legged. So here we go. Let's give it a try. One more. Okay, so I can hit the ball pretty hard again. No knee bend. The second ball, I'm going to go hit with the, those, again, those flat shoulders going straight down. So this is going to be all knees and very little glutes. So here we go. Okay, one more. Okay, and actually I should be able to get more power from my glutes right here, the bigger muscles than even than my quads, which is my knees. Now ideally, I wanna be able to get my glutes and my quads involved, all right, to get that tilt and that knee bend. So here we go. So that's getting both involved, ready? Right there, and this is, should be your normal backhand right here. <clears throat> All right, that's a good one. So a lot of what I think is easy for to help players remember this is to think sit and hit, sit and hit. Like you're about to sit in the chair and then you stand up and straighten up. 
Now you wouldn't, you, would, you wouldn't actually sit down like this, right? You'd actually stick your butt out and then go down. So always remember your glutes should go first, right here. So watch my glutes first, my knees second to cover the remaining of the distance. And then there's a longer explanation why that is good posture versus going down like this, okay? Now players should also remember after they get low and rise, do not completely straighten out and hyperextend all the way like this. As I come up and rise, I should have a little bit of, of give, a little bit of bend left still. Do not hyperextend your joints like this, okay? And, and the last thing you should keep in mind as you're practicing your, your glute bend and extend is to make sure you're keeping your head still. You do not want your head throwing off your center of balance, all right? It's okay if your head rises, but you've got to keep it on this axis of rotation. I always remember Tiger Woods would, would talk about his golf swing, and golf is a great example of getting tilt over here, you know, in this, in this nice tilted position. He would, as he would rise here, he makes, he makes sure his chin stays down as he's rising and turning. So it's like, pa, pa, right? Instead of like this. Once his head pulls you off your axis of rotation, you are pretty much done for. Although Roger isn't getting that low when he's hitting, he's still really engaging that glutes and notice that tilt and straightening out when he gets turned sideways, it's a little bit more clear to see. Now, even though a Western grip might get a tad lower, that bend at the hips is still very crucial. Now here is sort of similar to that fed style of swing with very little knee bend. Don't watch the ball, watch how much glute bend he's getting. Not a whole lot of knee bend, he can still bomb the ball pretty big. And in many cases, players who get low excessively on every shot aren't using their glutes properly. All right guys, now moving on to the next segment. It doesn't take a whole lot of talent. It's not very complicated to bend your knees, but nothing makes coaches more upset than students and players who refuse to do so. But there are, I'm guessing there are a few reasons why. All right, and number one, as we just discussed in the prior segment, players who get low with knee, only knee bend and no glutes, if I get low like this and see how my shoulders are flat again, it puts excessive pressure on my knees and my quads are going to get tired very, very fast. All right, it's going to be very tiring. Second of all, players who get low, you got to practice getting low and rising as you hit. So, so that for many players, if you tell them to bend their knees extra, it, it throws their timing off. They actually get less power. Now, third is a strength issue. Some players don't have the leg strength. If you have weak legs, you can't get low. You just won't get low. If your legs get fatigued, you know, late in the second set, you're going to stop getting low for sure. And then some players are actually just plain lazy and won't get low in the first place. Okay. But that leads us to number four and a great segue to what I really want to talk about with knee bend. And that is depending on the situation depends on how much you should vary your knee bend. Okay. More isn't always better. So let's discuss that. Now for starters, knee bend allows you to really lower your center of gravity, okay? If the ball is coming hard and or deep hitting the baseline right here, I'm gonna get really low like this, okay? So I don't get knocked over, right? I'm like a rock. Whereas if I'm very high, even if I'm a pretty strong dude, right? The weight of the ball is gonna knock me over like a bowling pin, all right? Ugh, versus, mm. so lowering your center of gravity when that ball comes hard, fast, or deep. Now, second of all, what knee bend allows you to do when you hit the ball is create vertical motion, right? Basically rising from low to high. And this is particularly important when you hit topspin because the racket, obviously when you hit topspin, travels much more extre extreme distance from low to high because you're getting under the ball, obviously. So when I'm hitting heavy balls from the baseline, I'm going to get a little bit more knee bend. When I'm hitting kick serves, even your flat serve to your kick serve, watch how much more vertical, you know, the racket's coming much more low to high. So that knee bend might help you a little bit extra. Now, when you're hitting flat and attacking, 
okay? You might not bend your knees quite as much. You probably shouldn't bend your knees quite as much, right? The racket is moving much more horizontal here. Even on, on a flat serve, the pronation is much more vertical. It doesn't really help you as much to get super low like this to hit flat. In fact, when you're attacking and hitting flat, you can still get that energy transfer from the kinetic chain with just a little bit of bend here. You still get that, that transfer, kind of like you know, fed. It's just a, a very short knee bend, okay, and explode into the ball. So again, that ratio of hip to glutes change. On offense, you might be, if you're hitting flat, because I think it's a little hard to put the ball away if you're overspinning it. On offense, you're going to be a lot higher with just maybe more glutes. And if you're defending, or if you're deflecting pace, or if you're hitting heavy, heavy, heavier tops and rally balls from behind the baseline, definitely a lot of glutes and knees, okay? And guys, take this sort of as a lot of, there's a lot of gray area here, because I know it depends on, you know, your play style, your body type, and your swing type. So it's, this is just one of those many, many factors that go into how much you should bend your knees. So to demonstrate the knee bend, I'm feeding him kind of this soft sitter so he can load up, bend the knees a little bit more, and hit a slightly heavier ball with a little bit more shape compared to his typical flat ball that goes through the court a little bit more. It's not the only way to get spin, but that vertical motion should help a little bit. Now here is his put away flat ball more through the court with less knee bend. Here he just hits it too high, but when he aims low, He's not going to bend a whole lot. Now for the points, you're going to watch him on some of these balls just get a little bit lower and get a little bit more spin. I know the ball's dropping a bit and that maybe that's why. But regardless, it's a little bit heavier of a shot. And it's just a different style of play. I know the night you're watching with these points in particular, the conditions were a little colder, a little heavier, and we were rallying more. So he opted to put a little bit more spin on the ball. Some days he's hitting flat. So it's just a different preference or a different style of play. And you can still drive the ball with spin, but it's not going to go through the court. But again, he's getting a little bit lower on every single ball. And it kind of reminds me of like the clay quarters who are grinding with heavy spin versus, I mean, compared to myself, I don't hit a lot of spin. I hit pretty flat. The only reason why I get low is to deflect pace and to lower my center of gravity, which is the other benefit of getting that extra knee bend. And then when I attack, obviously I'm a lot higher, but I'm going to get really low so I don't get knocked over and help stabilize on those balls that are hard and deep. That's like a little half volley there, so you kind of get the point. And compare that to when I switch back to offense, I switch my swing to that a little bit higher, a little bit more glute predominant. Now less so on the men's tour, but more on the WTA because the players hit so hard and flat, you see a lot of squatting and getting low to the extreme because it helps quite a bit to deflect that pace. Oh. Okay. Alright guys, now moving to the last piece, which is that ankle snap, right? Using that calf muscle to get that little pop off the ground. Okay, so this is very important because it initiates the whole lower body of the kinetic chain here, right? It starts, everything starts with the ankle. And the important thing to note is when you're hitting close stance, this, an this, back, this back ankle, it turns, okay? It turns like that. Whereas if you're hitting open stance, it doesn't turn. You're going to get the pop off the ground right here, right? Right, pa, there, okay? So that's the key difference. Now, we'll talk about foot posi position in specific in another video, but I want you to note the timing here because it's very important to be able to synchronize the upper body with the lower body as you're hitting. Now I know when you use this ankle snap, when you get this ankle snap and the push with the knees for that matter, you should feel the ankle snap and the acceleration with the knees happen right here. You should feel it literally push into the ball. Some people, if you go too early like this, then I'm, I'm opened up. Now my kinetic chain is completely disconnected. You see here versus right here, right here. Okay, so that's very important note that you can wait and time that angle snap and feel that push into the ball. Okay, I can't stress that enough. The second thing you need to be able to do 
with your ankle snap is to be able to, be able to get that ankle turned, especially on a close stance, finish on balance, right? Without falling over, all right? That's gonna be very important all, on all your shots, be able to finish right here. And lastly, the, the, the key mistake I see on the ankle snap being made is some people, when they get their, when they snap this ankle, okay, they're, they're only going like this. And this is called just a halfway ankle snap. You see the difference between right here versus right here? I need to get this ankle fully turned all the way up. Then I can really unwind into my shot. The lower body affects the upper body. If I don't get my, this ankle turned all the way around, I can't get my shoulder behind the ball. You see some people hitting like, like this. You see that? Because they're not squared up to their target. I need to get this turned all the way. Therefore, I can get my shoulder behind the ball and, and drive through it. Okay, so if you don't get this lower body fully turned here, then your, your upper body is going to be reaching over across your body like this. Okay, I know I discussed a little bit in another video I will link you to as well. So first we're going to show you with the ankle snap the incorrect way to do it. Watch that back left ankle. See how it's raising off the ground, but it's not raising off the ground and turning. Well, that was okay, but watch this one right here. What it's going to create is me reaching across my body. I can't square up my hips. And I can't square up my shoulders at contact. Now, now I'm going to start on that last one and these next several backhands. Now that ankle is coming all the way up and these should look way different. Especially if I'm hitting the ball cross court, that ankle has got to get up. Maybe you can get away with up the line because you don't need to get your shoulders you know, squared up to the court quite as much. But this ankle snap is going to make a huge difference and you should feel your ankles and your knees, your knees rising, pushing directly into the ball. Make sure you do not start this lower body sequence too early or it's going to throw everything out of sync. Your upper body and lower body need to be in sync. Alright, now to bring this concept home for you guys, okay, when we get triple extension, always remember the three bends, ankle, knee, hip. Okay, this is getting your lower body loaded properly, okay, so you can really let that unload into the ball. And once you get the triple extension down, now you can swing much smoother and easier with the upper body. I've seen so many bad habits created by lower body habits that seep into actually affecting the upper body. For instance, you know, if you, if you get low incorrectly like this, then players, you'll start to muscle the ball because you aren't getting power from the lower body. Players who start to muscle the ball, you'll start to have to overspin it because then you're hitting more spin and playing defense with your backhand instead of stepping in and driving it. Then you'll get even lower, lower to compensate and hit even more spin. So it can sometimes be this vicious cycle. All right. So everything starts with that pop from the glutes and getting your big muscles into the shot. Okay. P the one thing I don't want you to mistake when it comes to lower body is pl sometimes players think it's, it needs to be this big movement. And that's not true. Many, most times, in most cases, the lo it can be, but the lower body, look, I'm just right here, right here. It's, a, it's very subtle, it's very small. This really just, bang, initiates the swing, then my arms and my hands take over through contact, okay? So continue to refine your kinetic chain, all right? Get it smooth, and I guarantee you, okay, this is gonna help you get a lot more out of your legs with less effort, all right? So thanks so much, guys, for tuning in, and we'll see you soon on the next episode.